scripture reading this morning is from Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 11. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After this, he said, he was taken up before their, after this, he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same time, the same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Here ends the reading of the, mo the morning scripture. How about now? Yep, okay. Uh, in your bulletins, you'll notice in the, on the back page, there's a little writing up. Uh, we're going to be trying to do that each week, so just in case you want to read that as well. So on this Ascension Sunday, it is most fitting that our scripture verse covers just that. The Ascension of Jesus into Heaven. So as he was among a crowd of people, he tells them that the time has come for him to ascend back to his Father. And the people want to know, when is he going to return? He tells them that no one, except God, will know when he will return. But that the Holy Spirit will be upon them until his return, and now they are to be witnesses to all the people of the world. The people hear this message and they watch him ascend into heaven. And then they stand around looking at the sky, doing nothing other than just looking up at the sky. Now it is understandable that the people would have stood there dumbfounded by what they have just seen. Truly, even those that had followed him for years and seen the many miracles that he had performed would have seen his ascension and been in awe. However, as they are standing there, looking up to the sky, there is a feeling that this is the end. Surely this is when the kingdom of God will be restored, despite Jesus just telling them that they will not know when it will occur. I'm sure they must have felt like, if there's going to be a moment, right now is that moment. So as they stand looking up to the sky, two angels come before them. Now I don't know about you, but I like to imagine it happening this way. As they're standing up looking at the sky, completely in awe of what they've just seen, the angels sneak in among them and startle them when they begin to speak. They ask, what are you looking at? Jesus has gone to heaven. When he comes back, it will be the same by the same way. But it's not going to be right now. So then the people are left with this question. What should we do? Have you ever found yourself waiting for something? I'm sure you absolutely have. I like to think about all the times I've been put on hold when I'm trying to call someone to schedule an appointment. Your call is very important to us. Please hang on the line. But on our recent vacation, I found myself waiting with our two youngest children. 
You see, there was a popular ride that the two older ones really wanted to go on. And we had been checking the wait times all week. And it hadn't dropped below two hours in order to get on this ride. Finally, we were in the park on our last day. And the wait time had dropped to just one hour. Now, I know it seems like a long time to wait to get on a ride. But in this case, it was by far the lowest that we had seen it while we were there. So the family rushed over as fast as we could to get into the line. And the two little girls and I were just going to wait while they were on the ride. And then it happened. A sudden rainstorm hit. We'd had no rain the entire time we had been there. But now we were getting rained on. I managed to find a place to get the girls out of the rain. Unfortunately, I was not able to find shelter myself. And it rained hard for about 10 minutes. And then the clouds parted and it was sunny again. Unfortunately, the rain came right back and it rained hard again for another 10 minutes. Now during this time, the others were in line waiting And I found a sunny spot to dry out, and I and the younger girls were left waiting for them to go on their ride. And then an hour went by. And then another 30 minutes went by. And I began to get angry. What could possibly be taking so long? It was only supposed to be an hour. And then another 30 minutes went by. Now, I was beyond angry. I was so hot that I don't think I needed to worry about drying out because I was steaming the clothes dry myself. And after another 15 minutes went by, I wrote a note saying I was taking the little girls back to the hotel. I penned it to the stroller and I began to gather them up to take them back to the hotel. But no sooner had I written the note than the others came after finishing their ride. And I must tell you, I was still pretty upset. But then Carlin explained to me what had happened. They were waiting in the line, and the ride was shut down due to the weather in the area. But the ride attendants didn't tell anyone that the (laughs) ride had been shut down. So the line continued to move slowly ahead, and they thought, It must be running. It turns out the only reason the line was moving ahead was that others were getting fed up waiting in the line and leaving in front of them. And that's how they were able to move forward. But finally, the ride started to run again, and they got to ride it. Now, this did little to comfort me. I was still soaking wet. I had sat around doing nothing for nearly two and a half hours with an eight-year-old and a four-year-old that were bored to tears. And I told Carlin, I wasn't mad at her, and I wasn't mad at the kids. I was just mad at the whole situation of having to wait. But as I began to calm down, a thought came to me. Really, I am the one that's to blame for this situation. You see, I could have gone and done anything during the time that we were waiting. I could have taken the girls to one of the hundreds of shops during this time, or probably to every single shop during the time that we were waiting. I could have taken them to another part of the park and we could have ridden the smaller rides that were meant for them, instead of just sitting outside the line and doing nothing and complaining while we were waiting. You see, sometimes I think we do the same thing as Christians. We sit around and we wait. Just like those first followers, we can find ourselves looking up to the sky, waiting on Jesus' return. We can catch ourselves just stuck and waiting for him. However, just like those first followers, that is not what God wants us to be doing. He doesn't ask us to sit around and wait for Jesus to return. He does ask us to make sure that we are prepared when he returns. 
However, that does not mean that we are to sit and be idle while we are waiting. Just like those first, first followers, we are given the commission to be witnesses for him and to take his message to the ends of the earth. The other thing we can find ourselves doing is waiting on this world to change. We find ourselves sitting and saying things like this, why can't this thing change? Or why does this thing continue to happen? We sit and we say, God, why don't you do something about this? And while I do encourage you to pray about those things that need to change in this world, I also encourage you to be part of changing those things. You see, whenever we come across something that we don't like in this world, something we believe needs to be changed, we are faced with a choice. We can wait, we can sit there, and we can stew on how bad the things are. We can complain how no one is doing anything about it, or we can do something about it. Now I know that there are things in this world that seem so big that it's impossible that you could ever feel that you could change it. When we look at things like world hunger, or the anger we see in people, or the violence that we see in this world, it can be a daunting task for us to take on. However, we must consider the smaller parts of it. Are you concerned about world hunger? Do what you can to serve the people in your community to make sure they're not going hungry. Are you concerned about the violence that you see in this world? Live your life in a peaceful manner. Find ways of getting involved with younger people that might have anger issues and mentor them to help break that cycle of violence. If you want to see the changes in this world, by far I believe the most effective thing we can do is take that witness of a God of love and a God of peace to all that we meet. You see, we have a choice in how we view things and how we do things. We can either stand there and look up at the sky and wait for things to change, or we can use the gift of the Holy Spirit that's been given to us to work towards making those changes ourselves. Knowing that when we do this, we don't do it alone, that we do it with the blessing of Jesus. So I pray that we find ways to use that gift of the Holy Spirit to change this world. That we use it to take the message to all of Jesus Christ, just as he is commanded of us. I believe that is what Jesus would want us to do, instead of just waiting on him to return. My challenges for you this week are these. Think about one thing that you don't like in this world. I'm sure we can all come up with at least one thing that we don't like. And consider how you can do something, even if it's very small, to begin to change it.